Examining the timeline, I found that E. Howard Cato's sudden rise to fame coincided with another historical event. While E. Howard Cato was boasting about his overnight growth in Indiana, the Ku Klux Klan was boasting about their plans of expansion. They began parading through the streets of cities and states all across the nation. In an unprecedented event, the Klan marched on Washington, D.C. in 1920, the same time Cato was planning his network of churches throughout Indiana. With the knowledge that the Prophet started his career as an assistant to a high-ranking member of the Klan, I began to wonder, how does E. Howard Cato fit into the picture? How did the rise of the Indiana Klan fit into the picture? Was E. Howard Cato a member of the Ku Klux Klan? Things began to move quickly after the Indiana Klan was formed. E. Howard Cato acquired a permit to build a massive tabernacle in the state capital of Indianapolis. It was almost 40,000 square feet and cost $75,000 to build the structure. All said and done, the entire cost of the Cato Tabernacle was $305,000. In today's money, that is the equivalent of almost $4 million. It opened in October 1921, and the newspapers announced its grand opening. Gypsy Smith was chosen to preach at the dedication service of the new tabernacle, and 20,000 people filled the building until it was bursting at its seams. There were so many people that 10,000 were turned away from entering. Meanwhile, Cato's evangelistic business continued to grow. He had a six-figure income and a beautiful home that was attended to by servants. Cato toured from coast to coast, telling his bars to tabernacle story. And in November of 1921, his evangelistic business was officially formed. His motto was, no creed but Christ, no law but love, no book but the Bible, which gave the public appearance of a devout religious leader. Behind the scenes, however, religion quickly started to mix with politics. Secretary of State Ed Jackson was elected president of the Cato organization. Ed Jackson was a name that I remembered from my research into the Indiana Ku Klux Klan. Ed Jackson was the 32nd governor of the state of Indiana. In history records his association with the Ku Klux Klan, political scandals, and questionable activities. As the Ku Klux Klan took control of the Indiana government, Jackson was accused of favoring Klan-appointed officials. During Jackson's time in office, Klan meetings were publicized in the Indianapolis News, which was strange to me and out of character for the secretive group. As I dug through the archives, I suddenly stumbled across an article that helped me connect the dots. The Ku Klux Klan meetings in Indianapolis were held at the Cato Tabernacle. According to the newspaper accounts, the Cato Tabernacle became the meeting place for the strategic Klan operations. Even the religious meetings in the Cato Tabernacle were centered on Klan agenda, and they played Ku Klux Klan motion pictures during church services. The Ku Klux Klan was praised openly from behind the pulpit. The Imperial Wizard, Hiram Evans, held his first open meeting at the Cato Tabernacle. In an eerie glimpse into the future civil rights battles that were to come, Evans focused on the public school problem in America. It was racism. Different factions in the Klan chose the Cato Tabernacle to hold public debate. Cato's Tabernacle became so widely recognized as the Klan's official meeting place that the Klan meetings became called the Tabernacle Meetings. Klan-appointed candidates began taking seats in Indianapolis government. They were bipartisan candidates, both Democrat and Republican, with the same agenda. As Klan-appointed officials took over Indianapolis, E. Howard Cato announced his own candidacy. Like Jackson, he started under the Republican ticket, but then switched to an independent candidate. The public noticed that the Indianapolis government was being replaced by Klan appointees and linked Klan candidates to the Klan meetings at the Cato Tabernacle. In the end, Cato was pushed out of his own tabernacle and the prophet branded his ministry with a design created by E. Howard Cato, right down to copying Cato's evangelistic motto, 
He said, We're glad to have you here. We're no denomination. We have no law but love, no creed but Christ, no book but the Bible. 